get slides. Yay, okay. Hi, I'm Alex. Um, I'm here to present an audit that me and my advisor, Glencora Borodale, and our colleague in sociology at Oregon State University, Brett Burkhart, did on social media monitoring software that were used by our local police department. So we came about this project for a number of reasons in the news, um, one of which was a study in where 89% um, of surveyed police departments noted that they used social media to investigate crimes in some way. Following this, the Brennan Center for Justice identified which institutions had subscriptions to this software and the ACLU of Northern California also uh, uncovered misuse of these platforms. Um, an example of this in our local area of Oregon was um, our Department of Justice had a trial run of one of these software and one of their agents had started tracking Black Lives Matter and found one of his coworkers in the office had been tweeting in support of it and he sent this tweet as a memo to the entire department, which is illegal. And this coworker also happened to be the only black man that was working in the department and was identified fairly quickly. So they then decided not to subscribe to Digital Stakeout in the future. However, we found that there were still institutions that were subscribed to this software and using it. And we also know from similar work that um, uh, systems in tech and criminal justice systems have been found to be biased. So with this list of institutions that were using these software, we politely asked a couple of them for data and they all turned us down except for our local police department who sent us a CSV file with all of the reports that were um, gathered by the social media monitoring. So our data looks like the example below. It had a link to the tweet, um, the content of the tweet, as well as some ambiguous metadata, such as keywords. We also found that the Terra narcotics were geotagged within five mile radius of Corvallis, trying to keep it local, but law enforcement was a little bit more sticky. Um, so when we looked at this data, knowing that there have been racial bias found in the past in the criminal justice system technology, we wanted to see if there were any differences in demographics of those who were in Corvallis and tweeting in the location versus those who were uh, being picked up by this software. And while we were not able to find statistically significant differences between these two geotagging tweeters, um, it becomes apparent when you look at the demographics of the population as reported by the census that there are demographics that are more represented from our manual coding of these ethnicities than that are present in the census of the population, which you can't make direct comparisons because of the nature of how these two um, ethnicity and race categories are defined, but we can at least see that there may be some um, biases in how tweeters are being picked up in the region. Um, so with the metadata that was included, with the um, spreadsheets, we had these kind of ambiguous um, categories such as keywords. In particular, the narcotics search included keywords for tweets that appeared in the tweet um, for a subset of the data for about three months of time. Um, and we were able to reliably reproduce without looking at the metadata some of the words that we believe made the tweets pop up in this report. Um, and an important note about these words is while they are tangentially drug related, they're also incredibly general and picked up tweets in similar to nature and almost exclusively um, innocuously like the ones shown here. Um, so while we were doing this um, research, it also became quite apparent as we had to um, plug into the Twitter API and figure out how these vendors were using APIs and algorithms to produce these results and then present them to the police that um, they were not really using these tools, the APIs, and they were not presenting very high quality software. Um, for one instance, the law enforcement was trying to filter the Twitter API by county, which you can't do in the Twitter API. Um, the report results have gaps in when they're being run. Some of the reports run until 100 results are returned and they stop for the week. Um, and the predefined searches use marijuana terms when it has been legal for recreational use for the entire span that the police department had been subscribed to it. Um, we also came across questions about the nature of this data, especially when we had to go through an IRB process that required us to be very strict about how we approached this public data that had been gathered from the public Twitter API. Um, under the understanding that perhaps this is public data, 
but are users aware of the nature that their tweets are being picked up and could they um, induce harm by being picked up in a police data set? The usefulness of this tool also comes into question as if a lot of the, um, if a lot of the tweets uh, only contain miscellaneous and don't actually serve the intended purpose, and we can debate whether that purpose is moral all day, but if it doesn't actually serve that purpose, then is this even worth um, pursuing with the given biases that could be occurring? Um, additionally, in the time that the police department was subscribed to this software, um, they made an arrest in response to a threatening tweet, but it was not picked up by the software. It was picked up through a phone call to an anonymous tip line. Um, additionally, as we could see, um, there were differences in who was tweeting in, in the area versus who was actually living in the area, which would be the area that the police have jurisdiction over. So any use of social media by the police were, are going to have inherently biased results in what kinds of people you're seeing on social media. Um, so, as a final sentiment, I'll lead us with, leave us with this, um, and that is a question on what the purpose of monitoring social media is, especially when there seems to be a pipeline of biases that start with um, your population, and then you have a sample of those population that are using social media or Twitter, and then you have a subsample of that sample, and that's who is on public Twitter, and then you have another subsample that is who is on public Twitter in this area, who is geotagging their tweets and what kind of words are they using. So then we can see, um, it's not hard to imagine that as you continuously downsample to these very specific people, they're probably going to be demographically distinct than the people in your area that you have jurisdiction over. Um, additionally, when the police uh, were talking to us about this software and discussing its usefulness, they had wanted to use it to protect or get insight about potential uh, mass shootings or you know, acts of violence in the area, but it becomes apparent that this is not helpful in this regard if the results are just noisy and miscellaneous in a constant stream. Um, so yeah, I would just like to thank you for letting me present, and we have a lot more that goes on in the paper. Um, thank you.